Hi, as I promised, I will record you uh, the introduction to our assignment uh, about flight planning. And this assignment, as you can see on the topic, uh, consists of two parts. First, we're going to fly, uh, plan a flight in the Motion 3 software, and then we're going to analyze the uh, flight path in GrassGIS. Uh, we need both software packages installed. Uh, installer from Motion 3 you have here, and also there is a um, extensive manual uh, that you can download um, and uh, I will try to guide you the, uh, as you can see the it's over 200 pages so I will try to guide you step by step how to produce a flight plan in the emotion software so first we have to uh, launch the software install and launch it and we can see at the beginning uh, the welcome screen uh, there is also a side menu that we're going to be using uh, throughout the uh, planning uh, process. You select any of the fixed wing drones. So on any of the EB drones, we can leave the EB plus or EB or EB RTK. Uh, it's the fixed wing drone, uh, drone that we, we're going to use for flying next week. And the camera is a soda camera and uh, we create a new mission. By default, the emotion will open your location in Switzerland. This is the headquarters of uh, SenseFly, but you can easily find the place where we're going to fly. This is the button up here. Uh, you click the place and we're going to fly at Mid Pines Road in Raleigh, North Carolina. So you can just type it, click search. It will find the location and click the arrow and we're going to fly over there. Okay, so here we are. This is the field that we're going to be flying over and to uh, get to know where exactly is our test area, I prepared for you the KML file with the 12 ground control points. Uh, you can download it from the website. You can see here flight flight preparation, you have the COA, so Certificate of Authorization, the borders that NGAT, Next Generation Transportation at NCSU, obtained. And you also have the GCP points, the KML file. Uh, so we can then input it into the, into the um, software. You do it by opening options and you can upload as elevation data as well as custom maps, tiles of maps, and also features. So I already have uh, uploaded it uh, before, but if you click import KLM and uh, uh, point to the location where you uh, downloaded the KML file, you can uh, then click it and import it. Uh, by checking it, you can see here where are the locations of all our uh, ground control points. So the aim of, uh, of this flight planning for me is to cover all the area uh, where we have ground control points. As you can see, ground con control points are distributed uh, evenly. There are ground controls in the middle and then there are ground control points along the edges, just like we covered it in uh, the lecture. The side menu has multiple tabs. First one is about the working area. The second one is about the takeoff and landing. The third one is where we're going to create a block, a block, so the area that we want to cover with our mission. And there are also uh, some uh, safety actions that you can customize. And always you can change the drone and camera uh, before planning the mission. Also up here you have uh, certain options available. Some of them will be available only if you're connected with the drone. Here first you have uh, you can change your uh, background map. Uh, I found that Microsoft Hi Hybrid just loads the quickest but you can uh, switch and turn and off, uh, on and off different uh, backgrounds. Uh, this is also a very important uh, option here because it can show you um, the elevation column map. I've uploaded here a lot of uh, um, a lot of layers. You're probably just gonna have this three. So the elevation color map 
will color your area and you will see the variation in the terrain. So you can see here is there are hills. Our area is pretty flat, although here you can see this, this is a hill. Also, uh, it, it's, uh, it's demonstrated by the way it, uh, they grow plants um, here. Um, and uh, you can also toggle display here is the uh, co-op borders you can barely see it because it's a really 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 uh, fine line on red but you can turn back on uh, the ground control points uh, and then you have a center on the drone and uh, show pictures and measure the area that will be most uh, useful uh, when we are flying I mean not right now you cannot center on drone because there is no drone activated uh, so we're moving back to the working uh, area we place the working area on the map we want to cover this area so like our working area will be something in the middle and you have displayed uh, displayed this ring that looks kind of like a donut it looks like that because it is trying to show the three-dimensional aspect of the working area here you can switch from a toggle between 2d and 3d map so if you move it you can see that this is uh, that what we are uh, determining by working area is not only the radius which you can see here you can make it a little bit bigger but also the ceiling so how high are we flying there are different kind of references uh, when it comes to altitude and emotion you can find the abbreviations the ATO AMSL and AED it's crucial to understand uh, what do they mean and how to set them ATO is above takeoff so it's the altitude between this place and the uh, position of the drone about um, AMSL it's above mean sea level so the mean sea level is calculated based on some one of the datums the the datums used for geodetic measurements so we it is the uh, altitude that we can uh, read from maps something is above mean sea level there is also something that uh, that the uh, um, that the software uses um, based on the elevation data that is already available so this is a world model a, a SR, SRTM model that is not high resolution but it's still better than just trying to uh, pl uh, plan the flight on the plane on the flat flat plane uh, so this what th these letters will mean throughout the flight planning we most likely will use the elevation data uh, in especially in cases when terrain will be more, uh, mm, uh, more there will be more variations in terrain so as you can see we have uh, it set as 150 meters uh, above elevation data so where we stand where we stand on the ground we will look up 150 meters and this is this uh, the um, limit of our uh, working area this can be actually a little bit too high the limit uh, based on the uh, legislation is 400 feet 400 uh, feet equals a little bit a little bit over 120 meters so we're gonna change it to 120 meters to be sure that we're not gonna fly higher uh, than the law allows us uh, of course we are not on the field so we can't see uh, the wind we can't even measure it but you can simulate the wind based on what you can see here as a weather forecast so uh, it is important we are here connected to the internet but if you will be in uh, in the field when we have no connection to internet it's good to download the map data to just see so you will have it download it on your computer which will be your ground control station and you can see it even without connection to internet 
After that, we are ready to set up the block, uh, so the area we want to map. I'm going to turn off the elevation color map and go back to 2D to see it better. And we are choosing the third icon here, and we are adding a mission block. We are using the horizontal mapping. And we just click in the middle, it will create for us a default block. Now we can adjust it because we want, of course, the area to cover all the ground control points. So I just grab one of the sides out here and move it and create. Oh, I didn't catch it. Okay, and create a block. Okay. So as you can see here, we have uh, a, we have um, picked the fixed wing. So the fixed wing need needs a uh, really large turning loops. Each of these points here can be uh, is named a waypoint. So when the um, a drone will travel, the UAS will be on the fly. Will say uh, that it's on route from waypoint. 4 to 8.5. Uh, it immediately here um, calculates for us the area that we map, the altitude that we are flying on, and shows us the default resolution. We, we want to have the resolution of, I would say, an inch. Inch is 2.5 centimeters. And we can also adjust uh, a, a, Additionally, with the uh, higher resolution, we need to fly a little bit lower, which will uh, be safer for us because we're not going to fly over uh, 120 meters, so 400 feet. Uh, flight estimated flight time is 20, uh, 24 minutes, so we can cover this whole block in one flight. Uh, there is also important things that uh, I mentioned during the um, the lecture. The overlap. So one of uh, one of them is called side overlap and one forward overlap. It is really important that one of them will be uh, high. So we're gonna try to make this is the forward overlap so the the, um, the pictures will be taken uh, more free more frequently. Um, this one says the side overlap, you can see here how the lines change. If we want to have less of an overlap, they can't be, they don't need to be so close. Therefore, our flight time decreased largely. We're gonna set it, I'm gonna do the 80% just to be sure. And then the lateral overlap, I can leave it at 60. So right now we're flying just 16 minutes with the resolution of one inch. Remember, this is the resolution of the final orthophoto. And the DSM, the resolution uh, needs, needs to be um, multiplied by four. So we're gonna have four inches uh, resolution. Uh, down here, you can see always see the warning. So right now we have the start and home missing. Uh, home missing. We don't know where we are gonna start uh, takeoff and where we want to land. Uh, we also have uh, a warning that some of the overlaps will not be achievable. It means that uh, different cameras have different speed of taking pictures, uh, different interval that it can take. If we will have really, really high uh, over overlap, we it may not be able to tr to take uh, all the pictures that we uh, we requested. Okay, so right now it's time to pick our takeoff location. From very practical reasons, we take off the closest to the parking, which is here. We usually set up here and take off, add new start. And we're gonna start flying about like here. You can see this is a safe uh, safety zone that it should be clear of obstacles. We have a house here, but because we're flying with the fixed wing, we can launch it into the certain direction that's supposed to be upwind because it helps um, it helps the uh, drone to climb. Um, and um, 
we see here the, uh, the, the exact parameters of the takeoff. And then we, what do we want to do after the takeoff? Just start the mission immediately. We can restart the mission or just um, allow it to stay in the waypoint, but we want to exit, execute the mission. And then after a mission, we want to land immediately. We can uh, go to home waypoint. We can go to start waypoint too. Now we are trying to, um, we will set up the uh, landing location. And there are two options, linear landing and circular landing. We are going to pick linear landing. And our landing location, we want to land at the same place. So here is the automatic uh, cre automated zone, automatically created zone for uh, landing. We can, of course, modify it and we can move it, which will be really important during the flight mission because we want to uh, land upwind. So it will slow down uh, the, the vehicle in the air. Um, but uh, w as we can see here, uh, we, we don't have the, uh, the uh, wind input right, right now. So we're just going to assume that we're going to land, la land this way. It is really also important to always have a backup location for landing if for some reasons this landing will not be possible. Um, so in the assignment, I ask you about alter alternative uh, landing location. So here we go. Our flight is almost ready to be executed. So the last things I, uh, I wanted to show you is the waypoints I was mentioning. They can be displayed here as uh, dots. So each dot is a waypoint that is numbered. If you go closer, you can see what is the altitude uh, and what is the number. And you can also manually move these waypoints. So go here. Um, and you can hide it. Or show it. There is another thing that can be adjusted when you go to the block. You might you may want to change the direction of your flight. Sometimes it's um, it's important when the wind is pretty strong because you want to fly upwind. In this way, you can go back to the mission, set your wind, and then make make it um, that the the blocks will be mapped crosswind. So if you check that it will adjust to the flight. Another option for that, um, do we have it activated? Yes, another option for that is to move the move the blocks manually. So you have here this, uh, not move the blocks, move the lines, the direction of the flying lines. You can change it here manually. Okay, we're gonna stick with the simple plan like that, and we are ready to uh, simulate our flight. To do that, you click the connect button. Of course, we cannot connect to the drone now, but we can start a simulation. Pre-flight checks completed. After starting a simulation, you will see the cockpit here. So this is exactly what you will see when the flight will be executed with all the flight data, with all the measurements that right now they're just uh, pretend fake. And you can see here the buttons for the simulation. Uh, this is starting simulation and for, uh, running the simulator faster. Uh, and also you can change uh, the start position of the drone on the map. And um, we are starting with simulating takeoff. This is a fake battery level that will simulate what is the actual uh, battery level during the flight. Just to see the simulation better, I will switch to the 3D. And uh, right now we can see that there is a start starting waypoint assigned and the landing waypoint to this mission. but. The block is not highlighted, it will not be executed. What we need to do, we need to assign the block to a drone. We can have multiple uh, blocks if needed in one mission. So we're going to assign this mission to a drone. 
and uh, we can start our simulation. Uh, let's go closer to see the landing. Okay, I switched uh, the view to the rotation mode to see it even better. So here you have um, the pan mode and you have the rotation mode and you can rotate it. So let's take off. Caution, motors will start spinning. We can see our drone right now climbing up to the waypoint. It's going to start uh, circling over the home waypoint and starting to execute the mission. Uh, you can see here the fake horizon, how it looks like when it's climbing up. Going to mission. Here up there, there are uh, some buttons that are uh, can be activated or uh, disactivated during the mission. You can see that the gray, uh, darker gray are not active. So we, you can at any time go land. Uh, you can go to start. If you have received any warnings about adverse weather, the strong wind, the uh, low battery level, uh, you, this uh, warning is going to flash and you will need to acknowledge it. There are also three um, uh, buttons here that may be not visible during your uh, first launch of uh, the um, um, of the um, emotion but you can in options um, and user interface you can see show roll button show fast climb button and show fast descent button they're only for fixed wing uh, what it does we can start it here if you do roll, just look here at the fake horizon. It's going to roll and, and then it's going to resume the mission. It's uh, done, for example, for scaring the birds that are around. You can also climb really fast and descend really fast for the same reasons. So it's approaching the waypoint uh, number one. It's going to start triggering pictures. You can, he you can hear um, the pictures the sound of the picture is being taken. And here you can also see what is uh, the drone doing. Um, the little arrow in here shows the wind direction right now. So we have it set uh, and not changing the constant. So you can fast forward your mission even more to see it land. And that's it. Um, this will be the executed mission that you can then see. Uh, you can see here, if you go closer, the footprints of the photos, how the photo was taken, and what's the area that was photographed by uh, the photo. So, well, this is it. You can adjust your landing if the wind changes. You can um, execute any um, uh, in emergency actions. Okay.